Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today we're going to be talking about Pluralize 4. Yes, I think it just came out like two days ago. So I'm going to, this is going to be kind of an in-depth uh, tutorial. Well, not really so much of a tutorial, but a quick little tutorial and a review and sort of put it to the test and see if it can do what it claims it can do. So if you don't know what Pluralize 4 is, um, or Pluralize in general, it is basically a automatic syncer. Um, so it syncs everything from, you know, um, audio tracks to specific camera tracks. It can do several, um, and it can do it all at once. So it is fully automated. You just click and highlight all your clips. You, you know, click select, synchronize, boom, syncs. The issue in the past is it's been very clunky. Um, the UI looked horrendous. Um, you had to export like XMLs and stuff. And it was just honestly a hassle. Like I didn't want to have to go into a whole other piece of software just to sync up and you know, a, you know, Adobe Premiere's built-in syncing feature isn't bad. Well, I decided to give Pluralize 4 a chance because I saw this. Sync in Premiere Pro. Now, this is what made me realize, wow, you know what? I heard this is incredibly powerful software. Let me try it within Premiere Pro. So I downloaded the um, trial and I wanted to check it out and let's kind of see what it can do. So this is a wedding I just shot, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I, I already did a synced version right here. Whoops. So I'm going to show you what I did and how this thing works. So before you have to open up the, you have to go here to window extensions, pluralize four that opens up your pluralize. Now this looks super simple. So I'm going to show you how it works. So let's do a new sequence. I'm going to call this toast to test. This one don't get too messed up here. All right. So I know that the toast is these three clips right here. So I'm going to drag those three clips in. Let me see if I'm setting. All right, so I know those three are the toasts. I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on my other camera, which is a Sony. So this is a Blackmagic footage. This is Sony A7, uh, A77 footage. So these are several different things. Now, this has like six clips or something, right? So tons of different footage, two different cameras. All right, now let's go back and let's go to our audio. So we're going to open up the audio here. Um, and I believe, yes, this is the track, right? So I'm going to drag my audio down, just throw that in here. So right now, as you can see, I just threw everything in there. Absolutely nothing is synchronized. I mean, the A77, you have to stop every, like, you know, however so often. So those are cut. Um, they're not perfectly, you know, nothing is synced up here, right? So check this out. This is how we're going to do this. So pluralized claims. Now I've tested this. They claim that you, all you have to do is make sure you're on your selected uh, sequence here. Um, and you can, there's this little, there's this little drop down that you can do color unsynchronized clips. So things that don't sync up, move sync unsynchronized clips in the end and create a sync uh, sequence with audio replace. We're just going to do color just in case, but obviously this won't, that won't be the case. So all I have to do is supposedly click synchronize. Now I'm going to show you this in real time. Boom, synchronize, saves project. So now what it's doing is it's sending the media to Pluralize in the background without opening it. As you can see, I have this little guy, which is my recorder. And I have only Premiere and my Chrome open. So it doesn't actually open up Pluralize. It just does it in the background. Now, as you can see, this is probably a, you know around 26 minutes or so of video, Blackmagic ProRes, as well as Sony A77 clips. This is syncing it real time, right? You just saw that. Watch this. So, I mean, what has it been? Maybe 30 seconds or so? Boom. Completely synced up. Now, let me tell you, I have nothing to do with Red Giant. Nothing to do with at all. If they want to, you know, if they, if they want me to sponsor some stuff, you know, come talk to me. But, um, so, boom. Just like that, it synchronized everything. Now, I've already done this, so I made sure that this actually is uh, properly synchronized. And it is. And I was blown away. It knows that, see, there's this massive gap in audio. Now, I don't know if any of you guys shoot on the Black Magic out there, but the Black Magic has the worst scratch audio in the history of scratch audio. Some, now, Premiere, if we were to try to do this, let's try to do this in Premiere now. That'll be cool. All right, so we're going to click Control Z. Let's go and just highlight all these, right click, and. Well, we can't even do it. <laughs> I thought you could do it with multiple clips. You can't even do it. So that just goes to show you how incredibly powerful 
Pluralize 4 is. Now, I've already done this, and I made a multicam here. But it just goes to show you how incredible this software is. And I was completely blown away. So that's sort of just a quick little, I mean, it's literally that easy. You just basically drop all your clips, synchronize. But I'm going to try something. I really want to push this to the to its maximum limit. I'm going to do another timeline. And this is what I'm going to do, which this is kind of crazy. I'm going to drop in audio. Well, let's go actually let's go back to video first. So I'm going to drop in video from the Sony, which includes files from the first look here, a ton of ceremony clips. We actually had an issue with the camera. Actually, I'm going to drop in all of this. All of those clips are dropped in. That's from ceremony. That's from everything. So now I'm going to go on here. I'm going to find my first look. I know that's my first look clip. And then I know where's my ceremony clip. That's my ceremony clip. So as you can see, I'm not even sorting through any of this at all. There's our toasts that we just did. Um, now I want to keep everything on the same track, as you can see. So like the black magic, I'm gonna keep all the black magic on the same track, um, both audio and video. I'm gonna do the same with the Sony. Uh, let's just get rid of that clip. That was another one. So that might become a little bit of an issue, but we'll see. Let's go back. Let's go to our audio. I had a clip from the H4N, which I used as um, scratch audio, basically, for the um, first look. And then I'm just going to grab all of this. I Well, you know what? I'm going to grab from here back. I have no idea what any of this is. So I have literally no idea what these clips are. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, you know I mean, I'm not, I know generally what these clips are, but obviously they're in absolutely no order. Um, some of these may not even be in there and I'm going to push pluralize and see what it can do. Now, if this can do anything, I'm going to be incredibly impressed, like beyond impressed, because this is something that I couldn't even fathom. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we move all unsynchronized clips to the end. Just in case some of these weren't and that was my mistake. All right, so now let's try it. I'm going to do this all in real time. I'm not going to speed this up. So this is the entire day's wedding. Um, everything that what I would have to sync up. The first look, um, the ceremony, obviously, the toasts, and the dances. Oh, I think I forgot the dances, but that's no big deal. I just want to see if it can even pull this off because – Something like this, to give you an example, um, when it would be when it would come to synchronizing this, this could take me quite some time. Oh, all the dances are in there. Okay, this is something that would take me, honestly, quite honestly, hours because I have to go through. And one of the big things I found is if you try to sync things in Premiere, let's say you're syncing, I'm syncing Blackmagic footage with Sony and then with a audio device. The problem is I sync usually the black magic, which is my main camera, to the audio device. So that's great. Then I unlink them and I group them or link those two together. But then I notice that sometimes I'll then sync the black magic footage, which I then grouped with my audio, my you know final good audio. I'll sync that to the A77 clip. And I notice that all of a sudden the black magic and audio will unsync. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't had it happen in a while, knock on wood. Um, but it has been something that I've run into before in the past. And that's a hassle because actually I did a TV show and in the TV show we had, uh, you know, several different audio, several different cameras and we had everything synced up. And I realized like almost towards the end that it had uns, you know, had somehow desynced itself. Yet when I went back into the actual edit, it was still synced up. Well, supposedly synced up. So that's just like a bug that I've noticed that Premiere's had. And I'm not trying to bash Premiere at all. I absolutely love Premiere. But for me, to have a software that's as powerful as Pluralize 4 within Adobe, not having to leave and, you know, use XMLs and things like that, which, of course, we could go in to Pluralize 4 and, you know, do things within there. But for me, this is what I want. I want, I want to be able to do everything right in Premiere very fast. So just to give you an idea, this is an hour and a half of... Everything from Sony, the Sony and the Blackmagic footage, which the Blackmagic is in ProRes and the Sony is just, I don't know, it's like ABC HD or something. It's not really that good, um, but it's a B camera. So, but anyway, so I'm doing this in real time because I do not want to 
fast forward this and you know give you some bad example of what how it can actually do. But I'm, I, like I said, I will. This is pushing pluralized to the max. Generally speaking, you would never want to do this. Just drop all these clips in here and just try to sync them and hope it would work. That would most likely never happen. Um, if this does that, I will be blown away. Um, but I don't know yet. I haven't. I haven't tried this. I thought I would try it live on camera so everyone can see. Okay, here we go. Now we're starting the actual synchronizing. Um, but but the way I look at it is I go scene by scene. You know, when it comes to weddings, which for me is the biggest syncing issue. Um, for me, I hate having to go through and try to sync up. You know, two to three different cameras for two to three different audio tracks, especially if there's a lot of breaks in the camera, which especially during like an, a ceremony, it's like an hour, you know, there could be three breaks with the camera on each camera, which then there's, you know, who knows if they run together, if they're a couple seconds off, especially if you have a second or third shooter who shoots with a different camera you're not familiar with. So there's so many different reasons why this is just great to just plug and go. Here we go. Okay, so. All right. And his disciples began to believe. It looks like. All right, whoops, that camera wasn't rolling there. Christ has abundantly blessed your love. Look at that. Our camera lined up perfectly. So that's our ceremony. So that's perfectly lined up. Um, it looks like. Our dances, which I didn't bring my camera in, but still, those are lined up. Thank God, too. Toasts are lined up. Speeches are lined up. It didn't line up those clips from the ceremony. So it had some issues there. But this blows my mind. The fact that it can nail the toasts, nail basically most of the ceremony. Oh, that's right. Those are duplicates. So actually, no, it did get the ceremony. We had a camera issue, and it deleted um, the front half of the ceremony, which thankfully my camera angle was perfectly fine. But So no, this actually did it perfect then. So that means... That Pluralize 4 is so powerful within Premiere. It's not even the standalone. I don't know if there's a difference or not. But within the Premiere plugin, we'll say, was actually powerful enough to synchronize all of this over an hour and a half's worth of footage perfect. And like I said, th those red clips, I forgot, those were not even, those were like duplicates that I had like re-rendered. So, that, so that's not even real. So, I mean, granted, I wish I would have had my camera in there for the dances because I really could have seen. But for me, a, a tool that, is, especially if you're a student, it's only $150. For a tool that's $150 or $300 to be able to do that, I mean, this is what my editing consists of for a wedding, especially the long part. The highlight, you know, reel, that's fun to do. But when it comes to weddings, this is the, this is the lengthy stuff. This right here would have at least taken me probably two hours to make sure that it was perfect and... You know, especially these little clips where there's like four of them and that just gets becomes a massive hassle. So this is incredible. Um, I'm honestly blown away. Uh, like I said, I have nothing to do with Red Giant. Make sure to go to their website, download the trial for yourself and check it out. Um, I'm going to run some more tests, but from what I've seen today, this has truly blown my mind and I will definitely be buying the full version. Granted, you get the full version basically here. Um, in the trial, it's like 14 days, but I'm absolutely blown away. I cannot believe how good this is. Um, and like I said, this is not even going into the actual app itself, which I'm assuming there's a lot more, you know, things you can do inside the app. But for me to have it in Premiere right here, to be able to do that seamlessly and so fast. And I mean, my machine is a, is a decent machine, but it's nothing incredible. But to be able to do that that quickly and to be able to sync up all that audio like I just showed you, over an hour and a half's worth of video and audio easily in, you know, probably under five minutes is absolutely incredible. So definitely check this out. I hope you guys like this video. Um, It was supposed to be a little bit shorter, but kind of ended up a little long. So, um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, share, and um, hey, you know, maybe Red Giant will give me some more of their products I can check out because I'd love to do some more reviews. And if you guys have any requests, please comment those down below because I'd love to uh, hear from you guys of what you want to see for whether it's reviews or, you know, different tutorials or whatnot. I am doing a review on the Atomos Ninja Blade uh, 2016 version because there isn't a new version, but no one's really reviewed it since it like came out like two years ago. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a real world DJI Phantom 3 Advanced 
uh, review because a lot of people are just reviewing it are they're either just going over the specs or they're not really explaining things. And I, I want to go over how a cinematographer would look at this and the different issues and, and good things that I've seen and uh, you know what I, what I want to go from there. So definitely, guys, thumbs up, subscribe, share it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.